السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا أيها المسلمون To the long-time listener and first-time visitor, we welcome you to this episode. Now without further ado, let's get into it. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Al-Aqibatu Lil Muttaqeen, Wala Udwana Illa Ala Zalimeen. Allahumma Salli Ala Nabiyina Muhammad, Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Ajma'een, Wa Man Tamasaka Bi Sunnatihi Irayumidin, Thumma Amma Ba'd, Ya Ibadullah. Alhamdulillah ala ni'matil Islam wa sunnah. All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the sunnah. Ya ibadullah. Bithillahi ta'ala, in this short advice to my sisters in Islam, and this is due to what has been collected by Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih on the authority of Abu Sa'id al-Khudari <clears throat> radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. He mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the day of Eid, he went to the women and he gave them an address. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I want you to pay very close attention, O my Muslim sisters, to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said. And I want you to reflect on the advice and what he commanded you all to do. And I want you to seriously think about this. Every sister who is concerned with her hereafter, I need you to pay very close attention. Every sister who is living their life in a manner of trying to attain Jannah, I need you to listen to this very, very closely. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ya ma'ashara nisa O assembly of women, O you women, na'am, this is who is saying this? This is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a Sadiq, Masduq, the one who is truthful and the one who is believed. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, O women, O women, Tasadakna, give charity, spend in charity. So I want you, every single woman, to seriously contemplate and to think. Spend charity, inshallah ta'ala. Give sadaqah, bithnillahi ta'ala. Strive to give sadaqah and to pay charity. And in general, strive to do righteousness, to do righteous good deeds. And to adorn yourself with the praiseworthy characteristics. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ya ma'ashar al-nisa, the sadaqna, O assembly of women, give charity. Give charity. For inni, he said, because I have been shown that you are the majority of the people of the hellfire. That you are the majority of the people of the hellfire. Who? Women. Women. Naam. One of the Sahabiyat who was very intelligent, she was very wise. She mentioned, she said, فَقُلْنَا بِمَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ she, she asked, how come, O Messenger of Allah? Naam. And I want you to just reflect on this. Is that in our time, unfortunately, when people hear the likes of this, this may not be their response to seek to see why. How come? Why is this the fact? Because undoubtedly, this is the fact. Naam. Person could hate it all they want to. Person could try to deny it all they want to. Could be in denial. It does not change the fact. Naam. So she asks, Why is this, O Messenger of Allah? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Listen to the response of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Tukfirna Lain. He said, Because they curse a lot. Now we're going to come to see what is the meaning of curse. Naam. Because it may not mean necessarily what we restrictively understand just based upon hearing it. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, وَتَكْفُرُنَ ashir," And they are ungrateful to their husbands. Okay? That they are ungrateful to their husbands. Let us look at the first. And that is, 
that they curse a lot. Now, took firna al-lain that they curse a lot. The ulama they mentioned that what this means is that the reason that they are like this, li'annaha because she does not what she does not restrict her tongue. Now, she does not control and govern her tongue. And it is important to know the connection between the tongue and between the heart. Imbitat al lisan far'un an al imbitat al qalb. Controlling one's tongue, it is a byproduct of controlling one's heart. Okay? So the reason that a lot of the women, they are inside of the hellfire, is that they curse a lot. It doesn't necessarily mean bad, foul language only. It does mean that, losing curse words, yes. But also it means that what they are reckless in what they say. They are reckless in their speech. They are out of pocket in, in, in the manner in which they use their words. They just say things, but even sometimes without a filter as if they bring no contemplation to what they say. And unfortunately, we have grown up in a society where the women are given a pass. It's okay. She's just a woman. It's okay. She's emotional. Now, being emotional or not, regardless, you have to control your tongue because from the reasons that the women, the majority of them, Yani, they, they, they make up the majority of the people of the hellfire is due to a lack of them controlling their tongue. So they can't fall back on the cultural excuse and say, well, I was just emotional. Don't, don't mind me in what I'm saying. I'm just emotional. Don't listen to what I'm saying. Yeah, subhanAllah. Even if I don't listen to what you're saying, Allah heard you. You said it, Allah heard you. And if what you said was reckless, and if what you said was foul, was indecent, so on and so forth, there's no excuse. You can't say, oh, my emotions, my emotions. Naam. Ala kulli hal. All of us, men and women, we have to learn to control our tongues, period. Controlling of one's tongue and the governing of one's tongue, then this is a result that you have controlled and governed your heart. Naam. Any lack of this, it will express itself upon your tongue, it will manifest in your speech. So foul, nasty, inappropriate speech is one of the reasons that the sisters, you sisters, are going to be the majority of the people in the hellfire. When I say you sisters, you women, I don't mean you as an individual because we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he saved us and you from ever having to go to the hellfire for even the smallest duration of time, period, that we never enter the hellfire. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from entering into the hellfire. But I want you, and I'm using you to take it personal because all of us should be taking it personal, personal but specifically because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I have been shown that you women are the majority of the people of the hellfire. So if you're a female, you're a woman, take it personal. Naam. But it's for all of us. Why? Because if we all, men included, are reckless in our tongue, then the hellfire is waiting for us. Full stop. The hellfire is waiting. So this is the first reason. Now, this is the first reading because they don't control their tongue. So when you hear that, that they curse a lot, speak bad a lot, verbally abuse a lot, it just doesn't mean they use curse words because you have some women, they don't use curse words. They don't, they don't use profanity, but they still fall into this because they are reckless in their speech. They still fall into this because they're reckless in their speech. So being reckless in one's speech and being foul in one's speech is not restricted to just using profanity. And that has to be understood. It has to be known. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَتَكْفُرُنَ الْعَشِيرِ And they are ungrateful to their husbands. They are ungrateful to their husbands. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لو أحسنت, لو أحسنت to the men. And even if you was good, إلى إحداهن, if you were good to one of them, الدهر, 
You were good to one of them for a whole year. You were good to one of them. ثُمَّ رَأَتْ مِنْكَ شَيْئًا And then she saw from you one thing she didn't like. She saw from you one thing that she did not like. قَالَتْ She'll say, مَا رَأَيْتُ مِنْكَ خَيْرًا قَطْ She'll say, I never saw any good for you, from you. You know, he never did nothing for me. Naam. And, I, and sisters, I want you to pay attention to this because often is the case that a husband and a wife will get into an argument and the woman starts bringing up all of these things that he did not do. Well, she brings up something that he did not do. And this is the source of her anger, her frustration, why she's annoyed with him, so on and so forth. Because you didn't do this one thing. And sometimes the men, they may point out <clears throat> other things they have done. Okay, you're right. I forgot to order your fries. That is correct. And I understand you're upset with me because I don't order your fries. But I did order still the hamburger, the milkshake, the mozzarella sticks, right? the onion rings, and even some soda. I got all of that. But you're right, I forgot the fries. I forgot. But instead of taking everything into consideration, she gets mad because you forgot the fries. Now she don't want to eat. I lost my appetite. Yeah, subhanAllah, this is being ungrateful. I, I got everything else, but yes, I forgot the fries. And now you're mad you don't want to eat? This is just an example. But we find this is that unfortunately the shaitan, he, he gets individual. And this is men too. But now we're talking to you sisters. The shaitan, he gets you to focus in on one thing and it blinds you to everything else. How many marriages have been destroyed because of this? Because instead of looking at the bigger picture and everything the husband does, she finds that one thing that he did not do. And then she tries to justify it by saying, but out of all of the 20 things that you did, you missed this one thing. And that was the only thing that was important to me. That was the one thing I was looking for. So because you didn't do that, all of the 20 means nothing. I don't, I don't want to eat no more. I'm ready to go home. This is something that unfortunately is common to the point where I don't think anyone in their right mind who, who honestly debate with me on this, on this point. They have witnessed this. They have seen this. Okay. And this is with what women in general, except for those from Allah Ta'ala has had mercy upon. And what is the proof is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi tells us this. وَلَوْ أَحْسَنْتَ إِلَيْهَا إِلَىٰ إِحْدَاهُنَّ الدَّهْرُ If you was good to one of them for a whole year, ثُمَّ رَأَتْ مِنْكَ شَيْئًا Then she sees from you one thing. One thing. You're good to her all year. She sees one thing, then she'll have the nerve to tell to you, مَا رَأَيْتُ مِنْكَ خَيْرًا قَطَّ I never saw no good from you. I never saw no good from you. Naam. And then unfortunately, sometimes some of the sisters, some of our sisters, they may even ask you, what have you done for me? And then if the man starts to enumerate, right? Well, I did this, da, da, da. No, I don't want to hear it. It's not the point. <laughs> was it was a question rhetorical or I mean, what, what was the point of it? Because I've actually I've done a lot for you. You're just being ungrateful right now. That's very bad characteristic. This is a sign of the people of the hellfire. So what's the only recourse? It's to what? One, give sadaqah, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said. Two, control your tongue. Three, be grateful to your husband in particular, but be grateful in general. Be grateful, show gratitude, show thanks. First and foremost, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then show thanks and gratitude to your husband for what he does for you, for his sacrifices and what he does for you. He's not perfect. He makes mistakes. I make mistakes. All us husbands, we make mistakes. All of us husbands, we make mistakes and we come up short. 
But any good man, you know if you have a good man, he's going to try his best to do right by you, even though sometimes he comes up short and he misses the, misses the mark. That good man is going to try to do good by way of you. So be grateful for what he does and appreciate the little that he does. If it's only a little bit, appreciate him like you would like for him to appreciate what you do for him. And I know you do a lot for him because the good women, they do a lot for their husbands. Yes. And you brothers, as brothers, we have to be thankful as well. Be thankful and show gratitude to a lot and show gratitude to those who extend good to you. Show gratitude to your wife for the sacrifice that she does for you, taking care of the children, so on and so forth. But you know what? I get on the brothers all the time. We're going to leave that because we want to talk about you sisters. You sisters, make sure that you're doing good by your husbands. Because if you do good by way of them in the sense of that you are grateful unto them for what they do, you control your tongue, you give sadaqah, you do what is right, inshallah ta'ala, you'll escape from being the majority of the occupants of the hellfire, bithnilahi ta'ala. Because the goal is to go to Jannah, not to go to hell. Illa liqa. Till next time we meet. Astaghfirullah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.